Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Spellbinders was kind enough to send me some of their new winter collection collaboration with House Mouse Designs and I'm going to work with this one today. It's called Knit One and I always love the fact that they include a couple sentiments that go with the design. So I'm going to be using the one that says all you knit is love but there's a couple other sentiments in there if you want to add other sentiments to it. I'm going to do a little bit of watercoloring today but I'm going to do it a bit different. I'm going to use some dye based markers and this is a great way if you are are wanting to learn how to watercolor but don't necessarily want to invest in all of the supplies if you have some dye based markers it's a great way to try your hand at it I'm using some distress watercolor cardstock because I like the nice bright white color but there's two sides to it there's a flat side and a textured side and I'm going to use the flat side it's just going to make it a lot easier for stamping and you'll see that I do have a little bit of challenge getting that center of that image stamped so I do do it a couple times I'm using a stamp pressure tool just to help get nice even pressure but still I have to do it a couple times in that center part I'm using some black stays on ink it's a nice permanent ink any permanent ink would work you definitely want to use uh, permanent ink on um, this when you're watercoloring or else you can use some Versamark and emboss an image in order to do watercoloring. Because I'm using these water-based markers, I don't necessarily need to emboss. I always like to emboss when I'm using a really liquid watercolor, but because I am using these dye-based markers, I can control the water, so I don't really have to worry so much about having that little raised edge from embossing. So you can see I'm just scribbling some of the color onto my media mat here and picking it up with my water brush and water coloring sections at a time. I'm doing sections and I'm making sure that I'm doing the next piece with right with the wet watercolor. I don't want to let anything dry while I'm working on certain sections. I am scribbling this onto my media mat, but if you don't have one, you could use a piece of acetate, a piece of product packaging, an old sour or a, a, reuse a sour cream lid or something like that. That would work exactly the same. You just want something non-porous to scribble your marker onto so you can pick it up. Now keep in mind when you're doing this, your colors are gonna be significantly lighter than if you were just taking that marker and coloring it onto the paper. So you wanna be choosing colors that are a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. The selection of markers that I had at the beginning, I thought I was gonna use them, but I end up swapping quite a few of them out. I thought I was gonna do the yarn in a green color, but as I did that blue for the background, I thought it would look really nice with a red or a pink color. I have a red marker here, it's a pinkish red tone, but you can see when I'm watercoloring it, it's got more of a pink tone to it. And I'll show you later on in the video, I'll scribble it onto some other uh, scrap piece of cardstock so you can see the difference in color that you get when you are watercoloring with these. So just keep in mind, your colors are gonna change a little bit. It's, it tends to happen most with reds. Reds tend to either go a little bit pink or a little bit orange. Um, I don't mind for this particular image, but you will see because I don't get a lot of deep color for some shadows, I will go in at times with the marker and put it directly to the paper. But this is just a great way if you wanna try watercolor to try it with some tools and supplies that you already have. If you'd love it, you can go further and get some watercolors or I like to watercolor with reinkers as well. And if you don't love it, at least you've tried it and um, know whether it's your cup of tea or not. You saw me just there. I went right in to where those shadows are. I wanted to get some deeper colors and I wasn't getting it by scribbling it onto my media mat and picking up that color. You'll also notice every single time I scribble onto the media mat, I'm not scribbling back into the place where I picked that color up. I'm scribbling in a new spot and that's because I've already got water there mixed up with it and I don't want to screw, I won't get as much color if I scribble onto that spot as I will in a new spot. I also take a baby wipe, you can also use a wet cloth, and I'll regularly clean my surface to make sure that I don't accidentally get um, one color into another on my media mat, just to keep it nice and complete, clean and make sure that I'm not contaminating anything. When I'm watercoloring anytime, I basically am working from back to front. So I did the wall and the floor first, then I did the yarn and the knitting, and then lastly, I will do the mice, and then I will do the little knitting needles. Especially when watercoloring, it's just a good way to not contaminate colors. If by chance I got a little bit of that wall color on the mice, 
when I go and color the mice themselves, I can fix that a little bit. I can color over top of it and hide some of that. If you want to know the exact colors that I'm using, I'll have them listed down in the description box below. I don't have my little piece of paper handy at the moment, but any dye-based markers or water-soluble markers will work for this technique. I tend not to use my water-soluble markers for coloring images directly, unless it's a really tiny image, mainly because paper doesn't like moisture and the paper starts to peel too quickly. I can't get the blending that I like. So I tend to, if I'm doing coloring, I tend to prefer alcohol-based markers. And then I use my dye-based ones for different techniques like this. And when you're using the dye base markers for watercolor, that because the watercolors are not nearly as liquid as, say, when I'm using re-inkers, it tends to dry a little bit faster. So I will go in, I always start my brush where I want the color to be darkest and then blend it out. And then if I want a little bit more color, I'll get some more, I'll scribble some more onto my mat and then I'll tap that or put more where I want the darker color. Now I had a light peachy color for the noses and you could see that when I went to put it down there really wasn't much color. You really couldn't see it. So this is why you're going to tend to use darker colors than what you think you want. I often when I'm cutting down watercolor paper I'll keep the little scraps and they're perfect for testing out colors and seeing if it's the shade that you're wanting. If you have something that's a little bit too light on your paper it's always easy to go darker but if you have darker colors already on there it's harder to pick them up and go lighter. You can pick some of the color up with your brush and then clean it off and then pick up some but it's just easier to go a little bit darker. So having scraps is perfect for testing out colors and seeing what you like. Now I noticed here that I missed a wall part, so I'm gonna go back in and touch that up. It's just right between the knitting needles and that little knitting there, it's a little tiny sliver. So I'm just touching up those little spots. If by chance I wanted to touch up something on the back wall, I would need to make sure to re-wet that entire section again because to touch up one little section, you're going to get a watermark. So keep in mind, if you're doing a larger area and you want to touch something up, you need to wet the whole area before touching it up. Otherwise, you're going to get a mark, um, basically a watermark that changes the texture of that watercolored background. Try it on some scrap if you're not familiar with watercolor or are new to it. Try it on some scrap and just see the effect that it creates. Sometimes it's fun to play with those effects and use them in your creations, but most of the time it's not really an effect that you necessarily want. Once this is completely watercolored, I let it dry. I do touch up some of the areas where I want my shading to be a little bit darker and I go directly from with the marker to the paper. And then I will go back with my water brush and I will um, soften that a bit. So here is where I took that scrap piece of paper, used that red that had the pink tone. This is the same red that I colored or watercolored that yarn with, but you can see the difference in color from that scrap paper, paper using that marker right on it and what color came out with the watercolor. The last thing I did with the image there is I took a silver gel pen and I colored in the knitting needles so that they would have a metallic touch to them. Set that aside to completely dry. And now I'm taking that sentiment, the all you knit is love. And I'm taking a coordinating pink color. I have already chosen the pink color for the mat around the image. And I'm going to stamp and emboss this sentiment with some silver embossing powder. So I have some Versamark ink here. I'm just stamping the image a couple times just to make sure that I have some good coverage with that ink. And then I'm going to pour over the embossing powder tap off the excess and melt it. I always forget to use my embossing powder tool to make sure that that ink or that powder doesn't stick to any place other than the ink. So I'll take a soft brush here. I have one that I have dedicated just for sentiments and just dust off some of the excess powder that is sticking outside of the sentiment. There was only one section that it was doing that, but you want to make sure to do that before embossing. Once that powder is melted, you're not going to be able to get it off using my heat tool to melt that and it melts exactly where that stamped image was. I chose the silver for this because of the silver knitting needles, but it also would have been great just embossed with white. I like to use my tiny trimmer to trim that down. I find that I can see um, the edges and have a little bit more control and get closer cuts with my tiny trimmer for sentiments especially. You could use a larger trimmer. I just find it's a little bit harder to hold the paper and get some fine cutting there. 
I have some Barely Art glue in a small squeeze bottle here, and I'm just gonna use that to glue this card together. I love using liquid glues because a little goes a long way, and you also have some time to shimmy things in place. And this Barely Art glue, it actually really holds well. I, um, I'm impressed with how quickly it grabs onto that paper and holds it. I do like to put an acrylic block on my layers while they're drying, just to hold it down nice and flat while it keeps my hands free to do other things. While that card base and the image is drying, I'm taking some of the scrap pink and I'm going to add a little bit of dimension to that sentiment, but rather than taking foam pop dots because the ones that I have are a little bit too dimensional for what I'm wanting, I'm just using some of that scrap pink and I'm going to glue it to the back of the sentiment, trim it off and then layer a couple of them and then put it onto the front of the card. These scraps are just a little bit bigger than my sentiment so I just take my cutter B scissors and trim them off so that they don't extend past that sentiment. Nice and easy to do and the glue like I said before really hard, really holds and grabs that paper quite quickly. Once I have those layers together, I can just glue those onto the front of the card as well. You could also stamp and emboss or just stamp a sentiment on the inside of the card. I like them on the front of the card and I typically will wait to do my sentiments on the inside of the card after I have everything done or when I'm wanting to send my card out. Sometimes I'll have cards and I leave them generic and then I will put custom sentiments or ones that are suitable for the occasion when I am ready to send them out. The last step here to add a little bit of dimension and shine is I'm taking some glossy accents. I have mine in a really fine tip bottle here so I can get nice and detailed with it. Put some on those eyes because I always love, love these mouse with little beady eyes on there. And I thought it would be a great way to add some shine and dimension to those knitting needles as well. And because that fine tip, I can just really get um, detailed with it and get a nice even amount in there. If by chance you have any bubbles in your glossy accents, it's really easy to get out with a pin, but you do wanna make sure to do that while it is still liquid. You don't wanna wait for it to dry. Once the glossy accents is dried, your bubble is in there to stay. And I do wipe that pin off before going into the next eye, just because with that little bit of glossy accents on the pin, it's not nearly as sharp, so it's a little bit harder to remove those bubbles. I also sometimes use that pin, and you can see that I did that on the one eye. If I have gone outside of the lines a little bit, it's a really easy way to take some of the excess off and have control over it. After that is done, I like to leave the room for at least a half an hour. I tend to be a little bit of klutz and put things on top of wet stuff. So if I leave the room, that can happen. Here is what I thought was the final card. And then when I was tidying up, I remembered something that I had bought for adding to this card that I totally forgot about. This is a knit stencil from Spellbinders. Uh, the funny story is when I ordered it, I thought I was ordering an embossing folder because I didn't read it very well and I just did it quickly late at night, but it is a stencil. So because the card is done, what I decided to do, I was originally going to do a background and create a bigger card and um, totally slipped my mind. But what I'm going to do with this, because my card's totally done, I thought it would be a good way to add a little bit of texture to the wall and maybe a little bit of the floor. I'm not adding any color to it. It's just adding some texture. So I'm going to add some grit paste snowfall. But before I do that, I only want this texture on my inside image piece of the card. So I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm going to mask off the areas where I don't want any of that texture, any of that paste to get onto. This is much easier than trying to control your palette knife on the stencil. Very easy to add just a little bit of painter's tape. It makes sure that you're not going to get any of this where you don't want it to go. And it comes off nice and easily. I'm not putting it through a die cutting machine or anything that has pressure. So I'm just lightly putting it on there. You could also use a post-it note as well. I always have this roll of painter's tape, so it's perfect for things like this. Once that's masked off, I can take my stencil, put it where I want to, and then use a palette knife to put that paste where I want it on that card front. I'm only gonna put random bits on here. I'm not covering the entire thing and I'm not covering the entire background. Again, I'm just adding a little bit of texture to it. It's not going to affect the color because this texture paste isn't really wet, it's fairly dry. 
if by chance I was doing an entire background and that background was red, chances are it would leach up some of the color. But because this was watercolored with some markers and there's there's color there, but there's not a lot of deeply saturated color, it doesn't affect the color at all. It just adds some texture, ties in the knit theme a little bit. Um, and I just really wanted to see how it was going to look on there. I have this supply I bought for this, might as well use it. And I actually really love the texture it brings. It has just a touch of sparkle and it's not glitter sparkle, it's more almost like the sugar on, on pastry sparkle a little bit, not totally, but a little bit. Just adds a little bit of extra detail to it. So I'm gonna let that completely dry and while that's drying, I'm going to completely wash my stencil as well as the palette knife. And here it is dry and you can see that it doesn't change the color in any way. You don't see any alteration to any of that background painting or the floor, but it just adds a bit of texture to it. So it's just something to do if you wanna add a little bit of texture to your images, um, but don't necessarily want to change the color. Thank you so much for joining me today and spending your time with me. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a fantastic day.